Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining me. If this is your first time here, please subscribe to the channel and check out the other videos. And if you're here for a second, third, or fourth time, thank you so much for coming back and getting creative. All right, guys, it's going to be another fun uh, vintage poster recreation, so a fun tutorial today. So gather your supplies, transfer your traceable to your surface, and as always, make sure you take your progress photos. Now on mine, I went over my traceable with a black Sharpie marker for those of you at home that are going to pause the video and draw what you see. Um, if you're using just the traceable, you do not have to do the black Sharpie lines. Um, maybe just for the words if you want to kind of keep some of the same lettering. But in this particular one, um, I do recommend that you just paint right over it and um, we'll do the lettering at the end. So we are starting with a large flat brush and a super, super light raw sienna color. So that is white with just a little bit of that raw sienna. So it gives us a nice kind of light creamy base. And I just demonstrated a few different brush strokes. So try both of those. And if you need to switch brushes, if you want to finger paint, um, anything that you might need as you fill in the background. So we're bringing that background right up next to the outline of our dancing lady here. And then I will go right over the words on the right hand side. And if you are on a stretched canvas, as you reach the edge, just carry that color around the side of the canvas. Um, and it just looks really nice when you hang it on the wall, having that color wrap around the edge. Now, if you have to mix your color two, three, four times, don't stress about getting the exact same shade every time. A little variety in your background is always kind of a nice thing. And you also have full permission to switch out colors on your background. You can actually do whatever you want for the painting. All right, so just still filling everything in. And like I said, if you need to switch brushes because it makes it a little bit easier to get closer to the edges, go right ahead and do that. We are also going to be filling in kind of the negative space uh, where her arms and her head are. And then we're also going to use the same color for her hands and her face. Um, this was the original was a uh, poster design and they were kind of limited on the colors that they could use. So that's why they use kind of the same background for the face and the hands. But we'll do the outline and that gives a nice um, differentiation between the two elements. All right, so here I did move down to that smaller medium brush and getting that uh, negative space, kind of a cool shape that it makes between her arms and uh, her head and her hat. And if you need to use the pointy brush, go right ahead. And here I'm just kind of filling in the face, going right over those traceable lines. You'll redo it with um, the black outline at the end. And then same for the hands. All right, if you are holding your breath, remember to breathe, relax. I'm really proud of you for painting, and this is just a skill that gets better and more comfortable with more practice. So I'm proud of you for uh, being here today and painting. All right, so good place if you are taking your progress photos. Go ahead and take a progress photo. We're going to be moving down the smaller brush, and we're actually going to start with a light yellow, and that is going to be white plus a little bit of yellow. Um, yours might be a little lighter or darker than mine. That's totally okay. And we're going to fill in her hair. And then also we're going to fill in a few of the areas on the snake. We are mimicking the original um, design and colors from this poster. And here I decided that I needed the pointy brush instead of the medium flat brush. So again, if you realize that as you made a few marks and you realize that you need a different size brush, go right ahead and switch it up. So filling in that hair and uh, kind of, I guess, where the head of the snake is, we're pushing, uh, putting that color on there and going probably about halfway down the body on the snake. And then we'll be doing the same thing to his tail. So again, just kind of light pressure. If you happen to go outside the outline of this, that's okay. Um, the rest of her dress is black, so we can kind of reshape um, anything as needed. So now we're going to clean the brush. We're going to move over to light teal, and that is white with a little bit of teal in it. And we're going to fill in the rest of this snake. And we'll do a little bit of blending from this teal into that yellow. So you can kind of see where I'm just placing it at the end of that snake design, the middle section, and then the top of the tail section. 
Then I'm going to wipe my brush off or clean it, whichever you want to, and basically kind of come with a clean, slightly dry brush. And between the two colors with light pressure, I'm going to blend that light teal into the yellow. Um, I don't want to do too much because I don't want to actually muddy the color, but I do want there to be a transition between that light teal and the light yellow. And here grabbing just a little bit darker teal for the middle section, just wanted something a little bit darker. Again, full permission to deviate. You can make the colors more intense, you can completely switch them out, uh, but whatever you may want to do. All right, and then we're gonna grab a little bit of that direct yellow, that straight yellow. We'll put a little bit in her hair and then in a few spots um, on the design, on the snake design of her dress. All right, remember to breathe, you're doing great. If you are finding that your brush is shaky as you go to apply this, that does mean you're holding your breath. So laugh at yourself a little bit and just exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas. All right, so here you can actually use the direct red I didn't want it such a pop red, so I mixed a little bit of yellow with mine. So it's still kind of in the red realm, um, just not as intense as the primary red paint that I have. So you do whatever version that you want. Um, and we're going to be filling in the bottom of her dress, painting right over those lines, right up to the edges of the dress. Uh, her hat and the feathers coming from her hat will also be in this color as well. And we are using student grade paint. So if you are using student grade paint like I am, it does happen to be on the transparent side. So I do recommend that you apply it a little bit thicker or apply two or three coats of it. Um, like I stress in all my videos, adjust the video and the process to what you need for your place for where you're at for creativity and the supplies that you have. And that's really a big part of art is just adjusting to what you have on hand. All right, and if you need to turn the canvas sideways or upside down to make it easier to get into some of these areas, go right ahead and do that. And same with the background. If you have to mix your color two or three times and maybe it's a little more red, maybe a little more yellow, um, don't, don't stress too much. Some of that variety is actually a good thing in your painting. I am more proud of you for just actually painting rather than getting something perfect. Perfection is relative to each person, so I'm proud of you, and I think it's perfect wherever you're at, just the fact that you are painting and getting creative. And, you know, just kind of de-stressing for a little bit. This is a nice little escape from the world. It's certainly, that's certainly a big reason why I paint. The rest of the world ceases to exist. So I like to be able to share that with you guys at home. All right, so I think now we're going to move into the red. And there's there was like a little decal kind of on her neck and by the, um, the hat. So just kind of observe where you see me place that. And then we're going to do just a little bit of shadow in the other, or a darker space, red shadow in the other areas. So again, just kind of observe where I place it, mimic that to the best of your ability. And by doing this, you are strengthening your power of observation. And if you happen to be looking at the original poster and you see something um, that I don't add in mine, feel free to switch yours out to what you see on that original. Whether you're looking at the video or the original poster, uh, you're still strengthening your power of observation. So great job. Good place to pause the video and take your progress photo. We're gonna move into black paint next and you can switch back and forth between that middle flat brush and the small pointy brush. Use the small pointy brush as you get into smaller little details, and you're going to want to mind the pressure of your brush. Light pressure, you'll create some lighter lines or skinnier lines. More pressure creates a wider brush stroke, and this gets easier with more practice. All right, and again, breathe, relax, and here you can also notice how uh, transparent, how kind of thin the paint is, so I will be doing two coats of acrylic paint on her dress. Again, just to what you need with the tools that you have. All right, doing great. And again, if you need to turn the canvas sideways to get to some of these areas, go for it. And notice that every couple of brush strokes, I am going back and adding more paint. Um, you'll notice that the first mark that you make is usually your thickest, your highest saturation of paint, and then it starts to diffuse 
as you make more brush strokes. So remember to constantly reload your paint with reload your brush with paint. <laughs> you could reload the paint with your brush. I think it works both ways. <laughs> All right, so moving down to that small pointy brush, um, or actually back to that medium brush, I did let this dry and then um, reapply my second coat. Then we'll move into the pointy brush for the outlines of everything else and the words on the side. So you guys are doing great. I'm really proud of you for finding creative outlets, for sharing this with your community, for sending your pictures to me. I really like seeing those. Um, and just really glad for how much the Paint with Lovejoy channel has grown and how much you guys are enjoying the videos and your creative outlets. If you have anything that you want me to paint in the future, leave a comment or send an email. I am a solo production, but I do try to get to all the requests as quickly as I can. All right, so here it's speeding up just because um, we're going to be doing the outlines. You do not have to paint this fast. I think it's at double or triple the speed. Um, but as you get into the smaller pointy brush, play with that pressure of your brush. Your muscles are learning a lot as you do this. And the, what you learn in today's painting will make more sense when you paint the next time. And then more sense when you paint the next time after that. So uh, practice not necessarily makes perfect, but it makes you more comfortable with the process. And that's what I think is important is practice. And you'll find that you start looking forward to your creative escapes and they also help being creative. It helps balance out other aspects of your life. So creativity is really, really important to have. And if you've got kids or family members, you can use any of my videos and paint together. Those are great uh, memories and kind of even team building activities, but just good things to do with the people you care about. All right, coming along nicely. Same when you move over. Oh, I forgot we got to give her some red lipstick. So just drop that in there and then back to the pointy brush. So when you move into those words, if, they, if it's too much with the brush, you can switch over to a Sharpie marker um, for the details on the face or the words. Um, I do challenge you to give it a try with the brush. You'll want to keep your brush um, you treat it like a pencil, so just using the tip of the brush as you create these letters. But the Sharpie marker is always an option. Or change out the words. You don't even have to stick with the words on the original poster. All right, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out and getting creative. Please don't wait too long for your next painting. And until then, cheers. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the process of painting and I hope you are happy with how your paintings turned out. I'm really proud of you for getting creative. As you're uploading these to social media, please tag me at or hashtag paintwithlovejoy or email me your pictures paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. I really enjoy seeing them. Um, I try to post them on social media to encourage other beginner painters um, to try the process of painting. But please share this with your community as well. Anybody who is kind of scared to paint, share your experience with them and let them know kind of how much you benefited from it and how much you enjoyed the process. So kind of share, share the fun. Um, with that being said, if you have any comments, questions, feedback, things that you want me to paint in the future, please leave a comment. I try to respond to everybody as quickly as I can and any of the future suggestions for paintings, I add that to my production list and get to them as quickly as I can. So in the meantime, please keep getting creative. Uh, let me know how you're doing. And until next time, cheers.